Welcome to the Boiling Point. I'm Richie Ware. This is Steven Taylor. Now, before we get started, <clears throat> like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and if you don't mind, subscribe to the YouTube channel. That really helps us out with our algorithms, and we really appreciate you doing that for us. Now, today, Steven, we're going to be talking a little bit about some load swings, because, you know, a lot of times boilers, you know, everybody thinks that they're just going to run steady, but... That really doesn't happen all the time. No, it doesn't happen all the time. It, it, we run into it a lot on rental jobs where, um, you know, if they if it's a paper plant, uh, they've got big kilns, things like that, they open a big old valve up and put a thousand horsepower out there and, and whatever it is, doesn't matter what size water it is, but if yeah. it's if they open a big, big uh, control valve, they'll suck the water out of the water. They'll, they'll pull more all of a sudden, just a big surge than what the boiler will do. Right. So we have to work with them to make sure that doesn't happen. Maybe maybe expand a little bit on that. When you, you know you say suck the water out of the boiler, I mean obviously the water is going to steam. Yeah. So what does that actually? Say? So what happens? They start pulling more out of the boiler than the boiler can make in steam. So if the, if the delta P difference difference of pressure between the boiler and the header is greater than what the boiler can generate steam. It'll just suck the water right out of it. And it's going to it's it's going somewhere. The yeah. path of least resistance. It's going to go out that header because right. they've opened a great big valve up, dropped the pressure in the header. Boiler sitting at one fifty. They've got twenty five pounds in their kiln. Right. They open it wide open, so it starts sucking steam. And then if we don't have something to slow it down, they just keep sucking and pull the water out of the boiler. Right. Well, but then you do have some safeties in place that keep that from happening. Yeah, we, we, and, and most of the time what will happen is is it'll, it'll hit high water first because it, it pulls that water level up. It actually pulls it up in the boiler, and they do high, high wet water, and then when they start pulling it out of the boiler, they'll pull it out faster than the feed water pump can keep up. Okay. It starts dropping down in the first water, low water hit, and if they keep falling, the second low water just shut the boiler down. Right, right. So yeah. we, it, they're not going to hurt the boiler doing it yeah. unless they do it over and over and over. Yeah. Then yeah. it will. Yeah. Still important though to make sure those safeties are. You got to make sure those, right. those low water cutoffs are in there and they're, they're set right and, and that yeah. they're tested regularly to make sure they work right. Yeah. Cuts. Yep. The other thing that you can do to see real quick if that's if that's your problem, because you'll you'll see it in you know you'll have intermittent low waters and you can't figure out why and the feed water pump can't keep up and you're getting wet steam in plant. So you can come out when they when they open a valve up and you look at the water level in the gauge glass, they'll tell you what's going on. Yeah. Because that water level will st it'll start bouncing, surging is what we call it. And the surging is either, it, it's two things that call surging. Impurities in the water, most of the time oil or high, or high concentration of chemicals, or they're pulling it so hard, they're actually pulling the water up in, in the, in the bore itself. Okay. All right. There's, so, and, and then what we do to combat that, we, we've got a, you know, we've got a control valve uh, up here in, in our header that we're controlling a vent that we're venting out in the atmosphere so right. we can run these boards at rate, we can do what we need to do. Well, we'll take that, we'll, those most of the time are slow opening valves. Mm -hmm. If you've got a kiln, those type of things, they're typically not slow open. They'll have an actuator on them, but poof, they'll pop it wide open because right. eight-inch valve will go wide open. And, and the boiler can't produce steam as fast as they're dumping it in there. Okay. So we'll have them to slow that down. You slow that actuator down, it has almost no effect on the process they're doing in the kiln, but it makes a huge difference in the boiler being able to keep up with the load. Mm. So you slow that down to where that's a, instead of being a five second opening, yeah. make it a 60 minute, a 60 second opening. Where it takes a minute for it to fully open, then the boiler can keep up with it and, and nobody ever knows it. The right. plant doesn't know it, the boiler doesn't know it, it just slows everything down. Right. right. The secondary way you can do it, it works. We don't like to do it, but it works, is put an orifice in the header. Yeah. Size an orifice for the capacity of the boiler with the, 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 the delta P across it that you want. So you'll, you'll size it for one pound differential pressure across it with the capacity of the boiler and the operating pressure. And then if, if whatever they suck out there in the plant, doesn't matter. It's only going to let so much steam go through that orifice, so their their plant will just wait until until the bore keeps up. That protects the bore. Yeah. But the better way to do it is with control valve, slow so that thing down. I guess you know maybe just which we do permanent boiler systems, yep. but we also have the rental boiler system. Yep. So maybe just talk as a maybe a, a tip 
as you're calling in and talking to you about wanting a rental boiler, uh, you know, what is it that you need to make sure that this does not happen? Yeah, we, 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 we ask them about their process. They need to tell us what their process is. How, how does your process work? Do you have a steady steam load? Same steam load all the time. A little more heating at night, a little less through the day, or no, it, this is a batch process. Batch process meaning we open a valve up, it throws steam in there for, for 30 minutes, and then it drops off and we have almost no load for another hour. And then we yeah. do another batch. Those are the ones that we really, our flags go up. We say, okay, what, how does your actuator work? What are we doing here so we don't suck the water out of the water? Permanent installation, same thing. It doesn't matter yeah. whether it's permanent or rental. Either one, we want to ask the same questions. We want to get the same information from them. Sure. So we'll know exactly what the operation's going to look like. Right. right. Well, again, the, the difference being that, you know, you're doing that permanent installation, you're finding that out, but then we have so many different units that are going to so many different applications, yeah. you know, on that rental side. So good information yep. to make sure that we know. Make sure we know. All right. Well, good. Is that yep. all? You get it? I'm no good. more wisdom. There's some more. There's some more in there. I can like, I can see the ink yeah. coming off the hinge. Well, maybe we're done. We're done. All right. Well, we appreciate you hanging out with us. We'll see you next time on the Boiler Point.